My name is Graham. I've been in Virginia for about eight years. I'm originally from Canada. I, uh, I specialized in doing videos of automotive for, for a long time. That's actually how I met Ben from Gears and Gasoline. I had been in Charlottesville for not super long, maybe, maybe six months to a year. I'd just gotten my green card and I get this email in my inbox and sure enough, it's, it's Daniel. <clears throat> And he's requesting to have a video made of his uh, detailing business. Um, you know, I didn't really know much about detailing at the time. And I came and met him at his, his first shop in Charlottesville. <clears throat> that first video we made together, you, you get the idea, this guy likes cars. He likes detailing. Um, but until you sit in a room with him and you ask him all those questions and you film hours of footage that you eventually just can't possibly use because there's so much of it, you you really get to know someone. It, it, there wasn't like one moment where I said, you know, this, you know, the paint is what I, you know, I want to do, you know, there are like, you know, this is what I want to do. It was a slow, gradual process for me, you know. It, I made it a goal of mine, you know, to, to, to become somebody that you know, take a car that somebody hadn't appreciated and hadn't maintained properly and take it and turn it into something that was better than coming out of the showroom. It was better than when it came off the, the assembly line. Today we are working on a 84 930 Porsche track car. It definitely needs some TLC. It is a track car, so it is used and abused, which you know, it's something we love to work on. Definitely going to be a vast improvement when we're done with it. Due to availability, the 930s are a lot harder to find nowadays. They are just much more desirable uh, considering the, uh, the amount that are left on the road. Um, there's not, not too many out there and it's very cool to get to work on one now. Uh, hey everyone, how's it going? It's Steven again. Uh, we're back at Automotive Aesthetic with another detailing video. I'm Brian Daughtry. I am a detailing technician and partial owner of Automotive Aesthetic now. As you can tell, we have moved locations. We moved into a much smaller shop, and it's a little bit more on a personal level for us, actually. Big thanks to Advance, you know, while we were in the process of moving and making our shop. They gave us a bunch of products to keep us going, you know, for the time being as we were moving things over. So thank you to them for helping us out and keeping us going. We're in a smaller shop. We're washing cars outside now. There's some advantages and disadvantages, kind of, I would say. You know, the advantages you guys get to see us work outside as you guys are. Um, you don't need a big fancy shop. Um, disadvantages can be you know, weather and uh, you know, if it's too hot outside, you don't want the sun to be baking that water down. But if you have a canopy at home, try to keep the sun off the paint, uh, washing the car early in the morning. So we tend to you know, get to work pretty early before the sun is beaming and you know, wash, our, wash the cars and then, you know, we're inside most of the day. So when I first saw the car, I actually thought it had never been repainted and it was single stage paint. After we washed it and clay barred it, I definitely found out that the entire car had been repainted at one point. And you can tell that very easily with the, the gloss in the car and distinguishments between uh, certain panels that you can definitely tell the texture is a little bit different uh, versus a, a, factory, a factory finish. 
A factory finish, even back then, probably three and a half to, to seven mils at tops. Maybe, maybe probably not even that. Um, and here we're seeing 20. I would say they did not skimp on the paint. But for right now, uh, we're, we're, we're pretty much golden because we have a lot, of, a lot of paint to work with and a lot of clear coat that we could take off, but we're not going to. It, it's so much safer than, than polishing a single stage car either. We're gonna have no issues with, with compounding it and then, and then refining it back down to, to a show car finish essentially. Somebody once told me about a flow experience and how in a flow experience, everything else you know, melts away behind you. You're not thinking, you're not like, you know, it's like a, a baseball player goes up to the plate, you know, and he doesn't think about swinging the bat. It, he knows that like, it, it, it's second nature. He, you know, he, he, he does it without thinking. I think at this point, I probably almost enter, enter a flow experience every time, you know, every time I, I detail a car. You can just encapsulate your mind into just this one thing and not have to focus on whatever else is going on around you or whatever, whatever else is going on in your life. You can just draw everything out of your mind and focus on cleaning and you know, detailing a car and polishing or whatever it might be. I mean, you, you enter this, this like mindset almost of like, nothing really matters in this world but this car that I'm working on. And I, I learned that from Daniel the first, the first two days I was working with him. You could easily tell that he was entering a flow experience every time he detailed a car, no matter what it was that he was doing on it. Seeing a before and after a result immediately is probably one of the most satisfying things. Putting earbuds on, uh, no care in the world, just being involved in the car, seeing it transform right in your own eyes is to me, perfect so you know and then that's me Steven and Daniel feed off that you know it'd be completely quiet in the shop everyone's listening to their own music I feel honored to work on any car I work on. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a, if it's a Ferrari or if it's a Honda Civic. When the when the customer looks at you and, and has a genuine appreciation for what you do, that's what makes it all worth it for me. Daniel tragically passed away on July 28th of 2021, and uh, no one no one could have expected this to have ever happen. Yeah, it's just, it's still un unbelievable to everybody that knows Daniel. The, wherever we go, is, it's still, the, it's the same words. It's, they can't believe it. You know, it's... Daniel, you know, someone who is so full of zest, so full of life. Uh, you know, if you're feeling crummy in the room, he, he's the type of guy, it's his mission. It's his God-given mission and task to make you feel better about yourself. And with a guy like that, it's, it's, you know, you just don't know, right? You know, we all struggle with things. There's always stuff in the world that clouds our, our judgment or, or the things that typically make us tick and the things that make us happy. There's no, there's no answer. There's no um, written rules on how to avoid these things. And... Um, 
And I think that makes it hard. Films <laughs> off. <laughs> Thank God. I hate that part. If you want to kind of just like hold it up and oh. give it your uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Who is that guy? I want to be that guy. How do I get on the cover of this? <laughs> Sometimes I look back, you know, right before I set the alarm or whatever, or, you know, lock the door up. And I look, look at it and I say, you know, this is crazy, you know. I, I remember when it's like the beginning of the summer and we'd set up a, a big tarp canopy, you know, out, you know, outside my, my, my house. And I detail cars outside, 100 degree heat. It sucked. And now I look at this and I say, holy, you know, wow. This is crazy, you know, this is, this is my dream. You know, I, I've had this dream since I was 12 years old. Daniel started Automotive Aesthetic strictly from his, his passion for detailing. He had, had so much drive and energy for, for t literally taking the years off of a car. When he was little, he was always critiquing himself. When he first started out, uh, he would show his work online. And the older guys would be like, you're not doing this right. And they find out he's 12 years old you know, when he first started and you know, a 12 year old detailing and polishing and asking all these questions got him to where he was, you know, big shop and had a bunch of names under his belt. This is Daniel Wendell, we're at Automotive Aesthetic I'm today. Daniel. I, I'm Daniel Wendell. <laughs> detailing was almost the only thing he could think about day and night. He, I remember him telling me constantly that he would wake up in the middle of the night and think of an idea for an improvement in the shop or something that we could buy to improve our, our skills. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> to break it down, detailing meant the world to Daniel. It was, it was his bread and butter and it's what he had been doing for you know 15 plus years. I could not see something on the car when he does film. He'll find the smallest dirt nib you know, and redo the whole hood because it has to be perfect in his standards. You know, he's, and a lot of people know him for that. He was incredibly meticulous with, with paint protection film, uh, polishing paint, doing ceramic coatings, um, and everything had to be meticulous and detailed oriented in Daniel's book. He always wanted to make sure everything was as good as he could possibly get it. To me, I think Daniel perfected perfection when it comes to working on a car. You know, there could be a riff in the business plan or the, a, you know, a client with a cool car that pulled out and, you know, obviously Daniel's upset because it would have been fun to work on that car. But at the end of the day, he wasn't so concerned about that. He wasn't so concerned about the money. Ultimately, he was concerned about how happy clients were with their cars and the fact that Brian and Steven were able to do what they loved, just like Daniel loved working on cars. Daniel left an imprint on Steven and Brian, and myself included, and I'm sure the list goes on, because he had a gift of, of absolutely passionately loving what he did. And part of that was the relationship an owner had with his car, and then the relationship Daniel would eventually be able to make with that owner. Daniel made friends with everybody that came through that door. That smile can light up a whole room. Daniel was very charismatic, and he really showed a lot of attention towards people. Super helpful, always wanted to help people. Um, and if, if Brian or I ever needed anything, he was really just a phone call away. That's the legacy that we're here to just keep going. You know, I don't know much about detailing cars, but I know about Daniel, and that's enough for me. That's enough for me to be all in on helping these guys keep this going. Graham is the best lifeboat I think me and Steven have. I could thank him a hundred 
thousand times, a million times. Um, I'm sure he'd probably get tired of hearing it, but um, you know, the fact that he jumped straight in, took this role, supported us in every way, made this shop happen. Me and Steven definitely couldn't be doing this without him. So for him to be that role and to help us out has been the best thing for us. Graham was uh, a great friend of Daniel. He was more than just a business partner. Three aerospace protectant. Yeah, baby. Cool. Some big Graham energy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Dude, we should just get Graham to this. He's kind of like a Daniel to us almost. He's, he's someone we can look up to because he knows the work that we do and he knows how well we, we work together, Brian and I. But we found this little two bay garage and um, it's a lot smaller than what we're used to, but it's, it's good. Um, it's, we're back down to the grassroots and we can do what we need to do. So basically, if you call up Automotive Aesthetic, chances are I'm gonna answer the phone. I will book you with some services and do it Daniel way with a smile on my face. Without Daniel, you know, having that drive and you know, making sure that everything is perfect, I would still be leaving crumbs under seats. Brian, that was personally so satisfying for me. We've taken the skills that Daniel wanted us to develop over the years and, and moved them to our, our now current shop. Uh, our process is still the same uh, and our methods are still the same. There are certain cars that are timeless. They may look dated, but they'll, they'll never be, you know, they'll always be beautiful. I don't know. Porsches, you know, were really special to Daniel. Um, one of his favorite things, you know, he's been in the Porsche club for now it would be 29 years and he was 28. You know, he was a Porsche member before he was born. His father is a, is a major Volkswagen and Porsche enthusiast and I think just growing up and being around cars as a, at a young age uh, really set his mind for wanting to work on cars in the future and as well as Porsche specifically. It almost runs in my blood, you know. It, it, I grew up around Porsches, you know, I, I, I own a couple of them. Daniel was like, you need to drive a Porsche, you need to drive a Porsche. Got the privilege to drive an older Porsche the other day and I, you know, if he was here, I could be like, I get what the jazz is about. We are super thankful and grateful. The outpouring of support and interest in seeing where we're going. We have a good team behind us. You know, the support of Gears and Gasoline and, and Advanced Auto and Graham. We've got something good here and it was, we, it's something we could never let go. We just want to make every client car look new again. Yeah, no, nobody makes friends like Daniel does and nobody has a bigger smile than Daniel and nobody's, nobody's gonna be Daniel, but um, you can't help but think of him every day and, and just, just hope that he's in a better place. And it's just me and Steven's chapter to keep moving forward. So thank you guys. Love you, Daniel. We all miss you. And uh, I know you're ripping on some crazy cars. Mm -hmm.